Uh, hi everybody, I'm Brent English, President of Robust Tools, and today I'm in Sam Angelo's well-equipped wood turning studio where he shoots all of his videos featuring robust equipment. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Sam. Well today I'm going to talk about sealing and finishing, and I'm going to really try to focus on the relationship of sealing wood and the finish that you decide on applying for your project. Now, I sat down and made some notes, and finishing is an enormous topic. You can get into the, the weeds of finishing and spend hours and hours and hours looking at the chemistry and all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna show you some different examples of when I seal and how I seal, what I use to seal a piece with, and then go from there and applying some finishes. I don't always seal a piece, and I approach sealing a little bit differently, but I think it really goes hand in hand with the final finish that you put on one of your pieces, that you turn on the lathe, and that's what we're talking about. Lathe turned items. You're looking at a 15 inch box elder bowl. Okay, now I've been doing a pretty good job of finding some of those pieces in my shop that have been buried in the dust and I need to get to them. Anyway, I'm going to show you some of those pieces and where I'm at with those items. This particular bowl, I've got the inside of this pretty much completed. I'm going to put one more coat of oil on this and sometime in the video I'm going to turn this around and deal with the back side of it. I still have a little bit of turning to do on this and I'll go from the, the beginning and show you how I seal this and then put a final finish on it. Okay, but the front is pretty much all done. Let me do just a little bit on this and then I'm going to take you on the other side of my shop. I've got another piece chucked up in to my lathe and I'll show you that. Now you're looking at a really lovely piece of box elder burl that I brought from Wyoming. And so far, I've got a seal coat of my Sam Maloof mixture, and I'll put a formula up for that. And then I've, I've finished it off with some Doctor's Woodshop Micro Crystal Bowl Wax. And I've got about an inch left in the bottom of this, so I apparently really like that. I keep using it, so it's almost all gone. So let me let me show you the final step of this process. Just a little bit more of this product. And I just hope there's enough for the, the back side of my piece. Now I have the luxury of having four different lathes in my shop. And I'm often using two or three of those lathes for different projects. So what I can do is apply a finish and let it dry, sometimes not completely, because I've got this really well sealed. So this is just gonna sit on the surface. So I will come back and, oh, 10 or 15 minutes and check this and wipe it off. Sometimes it's not what you put on to a piece of wood, but it's uh, that finish that you take off. All right, so I'll let this set a little bit and come back and, uh, and check it out. Now I've got a piece of Madrone on my other lathe over there. Let's go take a look. And uh, I'm gonna start from the beginning, the sanding phase of that, and go from there. Now let me just take you through some of the topics that I'm going to try to cover at least briefly and put it all together with sealing and finishing. We need to look at projects because the way you seal and finish depends partly on the top on the project you're working on, the size of the project, the wood species that you're working on, and the purpose of the way this piece is going to be used, is it decorative like this piece right here? Is it going to be uh, utilitarian? 
And that all helps to make the decision of what kind of finish you're going to put on that piece. Do you seal? Yes or no uh, sealers and finishes. Anyway, I'll break down the kinds of finishes that I use. Anyway, that's a very important part of this. You know, what I'm trying to do here is not convince you to do what I do. Maybe you might uh, ask some questions. Maybe you might learn something that you might apply in your shop. Anyway, we'll get into all those details a little bit more. So there's a lot um, about finishing that's very important. And it's sometimes no fun to finish. I like finishing. Okay, I think it's interesting. And it's kind of like putting the final touches on something. And if you don't do a good job with that, you've wasted a lot of time and effort up to that point. Now, let me bring you in a little closer and I'll show you this little little hollow form that I'm working on. All right, let's take a look and see what I got here. Take this out of my chuck jaws. Now I've got a chuck on my lathe with some uh, pin, pin jaws. I still have this little nub of wood on here. Okay, there's my piece, a little piece of madrone, pretty thin. Okay, and it's gonna be decorative. So that's going to help me determine the finish I put on this piece and also, you know, how I seal it. I'll talk later about how I seal and why I seal various pieces. I'll bring up my tail center for a little bit of support. Now, up to this point, I have sanded this with a drill, power sanding up to, uh, I think, 320, and I think it's ready to go. One, one more thing I will do here as I move along is I'm going to clean off the surface. What I'm gonna use, a little bit of uh, mineral spirits, turn my lathe speed down, now, mineral spirits is a little bit, uh, oh, I don't know. If it's unsafe to use, you have to be careful with any solvent. So I don't use a lot of this. I don't spend a lot of time messing around with this, but I'm gonna just take a second and clean this off. All right, and then we'll come back and we'll look at sealing and finishing this little piece. I think that'll be pretty cool. Some of this has some some ripples from the drying process and I'm going to leave those in there. And then when I get this all ready to go, I'll simply part this off and work on the bottom of that. Now I've got the camera backed way off so I don't get it all gunked up. I'm going to spray a sealer on this. I'll show you what I'm using here. I use a lot of deft lacquer and this is a lacquer sanding sealer. Okay, and I will talk later on about what is considered a film finish and a finish that penetrates into the wood and that's a important distinction. So I'm gonna shake this up really well and the fact there's a ball bearing in there tells me that there's something in there that needs to be mixed. Sometimes a, a rattle can doesn't have a ball bearing in there. You don't really have anything to shake up. But there's some solids in here and they need to be shaken up. So, so I think I'm gonna just rotate this by hand and spray my sealer on there. Then we'll bring you in a little closer and show you what it looks like with the seal coat on there. All right, I think that's good. We'll let that dry for 10 minutes and we'll take a look at what we have. 
Okay, now let's take a look at how I approach sealing. I've got the cross section of a piece of wood here. And let me show you how I look at sealing. Now what I've drawn in here is some sort of a sealer that I've applied. Now some of the sealer goes below the surface and some of that sealer sits on top of the surface. Now here's what I typically do when I'm applying a sealer. So what I've done is I've sanded the surface back to the level of the wood. I've sanded all the sanding sealer away. I've gone back to the surface of the wood. Okay, below the surface it's sealed and there's nothing sitting on the surface or, or very little. Okay, let me make one more point about this. What I've done here is I've added a sealer below the surface of the wood, okay? And what that does, it makes a connection uh, for the final finish that goes below the surface and a little bit on top of the surface. It also depends on what kind of a finish you're applying, whether it's a spray or an oil. Anyway, let's uh, bring it a little closer and I'll continue with my little hollow form pot here. All right, my little piece has had uh, plenty of time to dry. And it feels a little bit rough on the surface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that back and I'm gonna just use some steel wool to do that. Turn my dust collector on. Okay, so I'll inspect the surface to make sure I don't have any kind of scratches. Now, let's just say that my piece is sealed. This is a decorative piece. What's the next step? Okay, now, reach over here and, so what I've used is a deft lacquer sanding sealer. Okay, this is not a piece that's going to be used and, and washed in the soapy water in your sink. Now you could put a number of finishes on top of this lacquer sanding sealer. You could do an oil, you could do maybe even a friction polish. It's not a very big piece. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a clear wood finish, which is also a deft product. And that's a good idea to keep the same kind of a product throughout the, the finishing process for the piece you're working on. Well, I'll just put a little bit on here. Okay, now what this will do, this last application will start to sit on the surface. This is a spray and it really is uh, probably more of a film finish than a penetrating type finish. That looks pretty good. And I'll let that dry and I'll make a decision. Do I sand that back a little bit, make it smoother? Uh, I can probably put two or three more coats on there without doing much, without doing really any more sanding. So I'll let that sit and dry and we'll take a look at that. All right, now one area that I really need to cover is dealing with smaller items. I have a little piece of pink ivory chucked up into my lathe between centers and it's just a solid piece of wood, but I could use this for a bottle stopper or a very small box and I've got a light colored wood and I want to seal it. Well, I'm going to use lacquer. Uh, nitrocellulose or sometimes it's just referred to as cellulose lacquer. I've got this thinned down a bit in this uh, 
horseradish jar. Got a, a brush through the handle and I'm going to just coat this with my lacquer. And the reason I would use lacquer in a situation like this is that uh, I don't want shellac or another finish to darken this really lovely piece of wood. So coat it on there. And this is a seal coat. And probably what I'll do afterwards is apply a friction polish or some other finish like that. So I'm going to wipe this in the direction of the grain. And that's pretty much all I need to do. Ten minutes, I'm ready to apply another top coat, whatever I decide. Something else you can do here, speed up the drying process. And we can buff that in just a little bit. Now here's another option. Before I put a seal coat on this, I can apply some abrasive paste. And this is my favorite Axe uh, abrasive sanding paste. And it really works as a little bit of an abrasive, but also as a finish. I won't put it on there. But I'm all ready to apply a top coat of whatever I want to use. And I could actually uh, continue with lacquer and uh, just finish my little project with that. Let's move on to one more example of finishing a small item. All right, now the last piece I did was this piece of pink ivory, okay? And what I've got chucked up into my lathe right now is a piece of Macassar ebony. It's just a solid piece of wood. It's not exactly a project. Now what I'm going to do with this particular piece of wood, which could be a bottle stopper or whatever, I'm going to put a, a seal coat of blonde shellac on this. Now blonde shellac um, is a finish that doesn't have a lot of color. It's more of a clear shellac and I'm going to just seal this. Turn this on slow because a little bit easier to, to apply this. And turn it off. And I'm going to just kind of uh, rub this in along the grain. In five minutes, I'll be ready to move on with that piece. I could add one or two more seal coats with this piece of Macassar ebony. So, again, I can also buff this in. Produce a little bit of heat. Really put some pressure on that and I can start feeling the heat. That means that shellac is curing. And I can speed that up. So what I'm going to finish this little uh, pseudo project with is some uh, Doctor's Woodshop High Build Friction Polish. And if you use this particular item from this manufacturer, read the back and you'll find that it's got, uh, this one has shellac in it. High Build Friction Polish is a shellac based finish. Okay, um, it's very much compatible with my blonde shellac. Shake that up a little bit. Now, if you put this on your lathe with the lathe spinning, like I'm doing right now, you have to be careful that you don't create those circular rings on there. So, what I'm going to do before that dries completely, I'm going to just take my paper towel and rub that in the direction of the grain. And there's my, my top coat. Now, Macassar ebony is a very dense, um, close grain wood, excellent for thread chasing, but I don't need lots and lots of finish on that. That's probably all I need to do. 
and I may not even need to do a seal coat, but it doesn't hurt. And like I said before, I just, I just think I need to do that, so there you go. Now let me buff that just a little bit. I gotta, I gotta buff that. Okay, now what I ordinarily use um, this kind of wood for is a finial or a lid on a box or a hollow form that's threaded. All right, let's take a look at my uh, box elder bowl. While we're waiting for the madrone piece to dry, I can tell that my, my surface is still a little bit wet. Now that last application of Dr. Woodshop's <laughs> oil finish, it's a walnut oil finish by the way, it's still wet. It's sitting on the surface, so I don't, I don't want that to get all glumpy and clumpy on the surface. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a dry paper towel and wipe off as much as I can. Like I said before, it's not what you put on or leave on. Sometimes it's more what you take off. Now really buff that in. And I don't really want too much of a gloss finish on this piece. I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. Now if you're on Instagram and Facebook, um, I'm on there a little bit and I've been publishing little video clips and I've got a couple of video clips of, of applying my finish to this particular box elder bowl. So you might find me on Instagram, follow me. Uh, Instagram isn't too bad. It's mostly pictures and I am uh, following or friends with lots of other wood turners. So let me readjust here and the next thing I'll do with this is I'm going to reverse it and show you the back side because it's pretty cool. All right, I'm ready to reverse my box elder bowl. The front side or the inside of this is completed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this between centers and work on the back side. Now I don't want to use shelf liner on this because it will leave an imprint on this finish. So I'm going to put a paper towel between my live center and my drive block. Bring up my tail, tail stock, tail center. And I do have some turning to do on this. That looks good. So I will do some work on this. I'll sand it and get it ready for applying a finish and I'll get back to you there. Okay, I've got my piece ready to finish on the back side or the underside. And I've used a combination of uh, drills and hand sanding. I also use a random orbit sander. This is a perfect surface for that. I can just hold that on there and turn the piece by hand. I got a nice big surface on there. And I've got sandpaper that goes up to probably four or 600 grit on this. Anyway, a little bit of uh, hand sanding down here. And all I need to do later on when I get completed with this piece is part that off or almost all the way off uh, I usually take a little saw and cut the rest of it off and then do some power sanding on my drill press. So I am ready to apply the first coat of a seal, seal coat on this. Now in just a few minutes I'm going to take you over on my workbench and spend a little bit more time talking about uh, blending oils. Tongue oil, linseed oil, teak oil, walnut, whatever you want. And one combination or blend I use a lot is one from Sam Maloof. And I'll talk more about that and, and show you how I do that. So I'm going to put the uh, first coat of, of my oil blend on this. Turn my lathe on fairly slow. And I just kind of Soak, soak the 
I just kind of soak the surface of this very liberally. Now I've got some big voids in here and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop my lathe and work around those. <laughs> I just wipe in what I've got on there so far. I want a, want a pretty heavy coat. This, this is really going to soak into the wood. Very dry piece of uh, box elder burl. There. A little bit more up here. Whoop. So as I go from lathe to lathe, I just do a little bit more, um, in this case, finishing. I'll come back to this and check it out. And that grain and figure is starting to kind of show through a little bit. So there we go. And I'm also going to get down into these um, burl features. One reason I left this piece fairly thick, it's probably... Uh, Oh, three quarters of an inch thick at least. I didn't want to turn away all this. So there you go. Okay, I think that's good. I'll let that sit and dry and we'll go do something else for a while. All right, I had to bring you back into the classroom here. So the first thing I want to just mention is thinning down your finish to make a sealer. Okay, so whatever your finish is right here, it could be varnish, polyurethane, shellac, lacquer, on and on and on, Danish oil, whatever. You could start with a mixture of 80% finish and 20% thinner. And the thinner could be mineral spirits, lacquer thinner, denatured alcohol. That's your first coat. Okay, your second coat, you can add a little bit more finish to the blend. So it's 90-10. And then finally, um, start by applying 100% of your finish. And that may depend if you're using the same finish as a, as a sealer and also as your final finish. Now, now, one thing you will hear about lacquer and shellac is that their film finishes. They sit on the surface and that's sort of the way they're designed. Now, this is what I use for, for this particular little, little piece, which is really gonna be neat. I like it a lot. So I'm gonna use deft clear wood finish. It's a gloss as the final finish. And what I used to seal this was lacquer sanding sealer. It's the same product, it's the same you know, manufacturer, okay? I just picked this up <laughs> in my local Ace Hardware store. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna try that. Here's, here's my point, and it's a question I'm asking you, but I'm also asking myself. If this is a, a film finish, okay, then what about the sanding sealer? Why does it necessarily penetrate into the wood? Well, it's probably a different formulation for one thing. And I pointed out that got a ball bearing in this can and nothing in this can. Okay, so there's something in here that makes this a sealer. It's probably thinned down a little bit more and it does soak into the wood. Now I use shellac a lot and I haven't used shellac, I don't think yet in this video. So I'm really trying to push myself when it comes to lacquer. Lacquer is a great finish. It's a little bit more durable than shellac. I don't, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't suspect this piece is going to get handled a lot and hopefully nobody tries to wash it off. Ugh. Okay, we'll, we'll do a little bit more with sealers and finishes here as we move along. As far as what kind of finish you use or the sealer. Again, it depends on the wood species, the particular project, the size, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, I had to go get my little bottle of 
my Sam Maloof mixture, and I am going to put up in the description the formula for for these finishes that Sam Maloof made. Sam Maloof passed away a number of years ago. He was 95 or 96, still working in his shop, making these amazing rocking chairs. He was very well known for that. And if you don't know who Sam Maloof was, you should check him out, do a little bit of research. And in the book here, in fact, the page fell out, there's a, a description of the formula that he uses. Now, it's actually a two-part formula. Okay, and again, I'm going to put this up in the description. So part one, or step one, boil linseed oil, raw tongue oil, and urethane varnish a semi-gloss, this is right from the book. And then step two, the second stage of this process, he used linseed oil, raw tongue oil, and shredded beeswax, okay? And he'd buff this in, and that's how he would get this incredible finish. Well, um, I'm a big believer in making your own finish, all right? You can buy these cans of wipe-on poly and all kinds of stuff. Uh, tongue oil finish, I don't want to get too far away because I get on a soapbox here. Those are very expensive and a lot of times they're 50% mineral spirits. So you're paying a lot for a very cheap ingredient on those. Something else I'm going to post in the description is this chart right here. And I've had this chart for 20 years. Okay, it's a, on a Word file, I'll put it in a PDF file, but it talks about different kinds of finishes, solvents, thinners, uh, reactive finishes, evaporative. I'm not going to, you know, read this to you. It's got a lot of really good information in it, so that's some good stuff there. Anyway, um, let, me, let me bring this piece back up right here. Okay, now... This is the other little piece I was working on across the room there. And I started out sealing it with some of this spray lacquer sealer. All right. Probably put a couple coats of that on there. And then I, I showed you applying the lacquer, the spray finish lacquer, which is a gloss. All right. And I can buff this. I can uh, cut that gloss back a little bit. Uh, I think the surface needs a little bit of attention. It's a little bit, uh, you know, rough. Okay, I've applied three or four coats of the finished lacquer from the spray can on this. One way to build up um, a surface thickness is by spraying. If I wiped on some sort of a um, lacquer, I wouldn't get very far because one coat that you're applying blends into the previous coat. With a spray, you can really build up a thickness on that. Okay, now one more general comment about sealing and finishing. Uh, this is a breadboard that I got from my house. My wife and I have been using uh, this breadboard and one with just straight grain, straight wood, for years, they're probably 10 years old. And there was a, a time back in the day that I would make 30 or 40 of these a year, maybe more. And I'd make a batch and I'd sell them and I did that for a long time. So I'd have these all set out all over my shop on every horizontal surface I could find. And I would go through and I'd put a seal coat on all of them. I'd sand the back a little bit another seal coat, and then eventually I'd put some sort of an oil finish on this. I would use varnish, polyurethane, linseed oil, I'd mix them up. Uh, I was never too fussy about that. And that's where I really started to mix finishes. I refinished furniture for maybe 25 years, okay? Along with having a full-time job as a teacher and a counselor in a middle school. So, uh, I learned a lot about finishing by restoring furniture. Uh, I get a chair or a table or something, and the first thing I had to do was figure out what the finish was on that particular uh, 
piece of furniture and then go from there. I wanted to put the same finish on uh, that started out on that piece of furniture. So anyway, um, I'm a firm believer in sealing. I probably seal lots of pieces that I don't need to seal, but I just do it because that is what I think I should do. All right, let's go back to a lathe and we'll, we'll do a little bit more work on this box elder burl bowl. Okay. Okay, let's review where we have been with this burl project. I'm on the underside of this piece and so far what I've done is I put uh, a couple seal coats of my Maloof mixture on here. And this was actually uh, started about two days ago. So it's had plenty of time to dry. And I'm just going to take a piece of steel wool. It's a little bit rough. And I'm going to just do this by hand because there's a lot of voids in here that are, are not going to be easy to, to cover. So just very quickly I'm just going to smooth this out. And I like a very smooth surface. Alright, and then I'll just take uh, a paper towel and wipe this down. If I have an air hose handy, I will I'll blow that surface off, get all those nasty metal, metal shavings off there. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to just take some, some paint thinner just to be safe here. Clean this surface off. I don't absolutely love steel wool. I think it's a, a good abrasive product when used in certain situations, but uh, the little metal shavings are annoying. So, okay, now since I'm using an oil, I'm going to use this micro crystal bowl wax finish. And I've got just about enough in here to finish the back of this piece. This is uh, a walnut purified oil. Okay, so I think what I'll do is put this on by hand. I'm going to avoid this area right in here. I don't want to make that real shiny or, or clumpy, glumpy. I don't know if that's a term, so I'm going to just take Take some of this on my paper towel. All right, so I'm gonna start right here. So I've got a couple seal coats on this. I'm applying my final top coat of finish. At least two or three coats of this. And then probably a little bit of my, my wax mixture. And it'll have a real nice uh, flat finish or satin finish on it. There you go. Now I've got this wood sealed really well and this will take uh, a little while to dry so I'll let that sit on there, wipe off the excess and we'll call it good. So I put on my final finish coat and I think that'll do it. I'll put a little bit of wax on here and one more comment about using wax. Um, I'm, I have some beeswax that I mixed up with some tongue oil, okay? So it's actually got a little bit of finish in this. It's suspended in the wax. Um, I believe that wax is going to wear off after a number of years of use, especially if this piece gets um, washed in the sink. This is to me mostly a decorative piece so I'm going to just put a little bit of that wax on there and the fact that it's got a finish in here maybe will uh, prolong the life of that wax. Take my paper towel and you might hear my dog back there rooting around trying to upstage me. What do they say about acting with children and pets. Uh, anyway, there we go. Now, I appreciate it if you have hung in there with me this entire video. It's gotten a little bit long, but you know, 
Finishing and sealing is a big topic and I only scratched the surface. I've got lots of other videos on finishing and I'll put up a, a playlist or I'll put up some of those those other finishing videos. Please subscribe to my channel. It really means a lot. It really helps me um, get the word out and I think I've got a really good library of videos. So thank you very much and I will talk to you next time. This is Sam and uh, the beautiful West End of Billings, Montana. Yeah.